Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Simply Noteful. My name is Miranda and I've been trying to create some helpful videos to show how I use the Noteful app for digital planning. So today I wanted to talk about some of the basics of Noteful. So if you've been using the Noteful app for a while and you already know all of this stuff, this video may be a little bit boring for you. But if you're new to Noteful and digital planning, or maybe you're switching over from another app, Noteful can take a little getting used to. So I thought it would be helpful to make a video just going over a few of um, the basic features in Noteful and how I use them in digital planning. All right, let's get started. The first thing you need to master to really love Noteful is how to activate the links in your planner. If you're coming from GoodNotes, you'll know that you have to tap on this pin to take you out of editing mode, and then you just do some quick taps to navigate around your planner. Let me go back to Noteful. With Noteful, links work a little bit differently. So you can have any tool selected. You just have to long tap on your links to activate them. It's kind of a small change, but once you get used to it, you are going to love it. When I used to use GoodNotes, let me go back into GoodNotes, even when I was in editing mode, I know that my pen wouldn't work to activate the links, but if you tap on it with your finger, it still activates the links. So there were so many times, just because I like to cover up my planners a lot, especially in the weekly section. Um, so I would just cover up those links. And there were so many times where I was working in my planner and I would accidentally tap on a link with my finger and then it would just um, take me to another section in my planner. And it was so frustrating. With GoodNotes, I very rarely, or sorry, with Noteful, <laughs> I very rarely accidentally tap on a link because you have to be a lot more intentional. You just don't, it's not a quick tap. You have to tap and hold for a second. So I love it. Okay, now let's talk about the toolbar. You may have noticed that I have my toolbar right here on the left hand side of my screen instead of the top like it usually is in GoodNotes. So with Noteful, you can pick any position you want that toolbar in just by tapping on these three dots here. And if I go into this view menu, you can see I can have my toolbar on the left, on the top, to the right and the bottom. I like to have mine on the left, but I am using a portrait planner. If you were using a um, landscape planner, you might like to have it on the top, but it's just really nice to have that option. I know that in GoodNotes, when I had my planner open just in the editing mode here, you can see that I, it didn't fill the screen very well. I always had kind of this wasted space along the side and it, I don't know, it always bothered me a little bit. But with Noteful, since I can put my toolbar along the side, it does fill the screen better. Um, Noteful doesn't have a view only option like GoodNotes has, where you can kind of tap on it and it fills the whole screen. But maybe that's something they will add in the future. I don't know, but I really don't mind it very much because it does fill the screen so well this way. And usually if I have my planner open, I'm working in it. So I didn't really use the view only screen very often. Um, but you can see you also have a few other options in here. Um, you can change your tab bar position. You can put it on the bottom or, oops, leave it on the top. You can also keep your iPad awake when you're using it in um, Noteful. You can turn on and off the status bar. You have the zoom window, you have a timer. There are a lot of things you can do. Oh, and you can pick how you wanna scroll through your pages. I like to have it in horizontal, but if you like scrolling vertically, you can do that. Also, um, you can see that if you go into options here, I can customize my toolbar. So if I tap on that, I can remove the tools that I don't use very often. I can rearrange them and put them in any order I want. Also, this is kind of interesting. You have this little insert button here. You can see that if I turn that on, that um, could take the place of having tags, page, image, text box, shapes, and stickers. Oh, and I guess the the photo option. Um, so you could potentially take those off of your toolbar and just free up some space, like if you prefer to just see more colors. Um, so it's kind of just some good options. Now let's talk about the pen and highlighter tools together because they work pretty similarly. 
when I tap on the pen tool, so you tap once to select it and then once to bring up this um, pop-up box, you can see that I have three pen options that I can pick from. And then right here, I can pick different pen sizes or I can use the slider to adjust my pen sizes. You can even um, do a few more settings here, like um, changing your writing pressure. I I'm not an expert on this. I don't really write in my planner very often because I don't love my handwriting, so I haven't messed with these a lot. Um, but I do know that when I would write in Good Notes versus writing in Noteful, I couldn't really tell much of a difference. Um, but maybe some of you who like to write in your planner so a lot can let us know which one you prefer. For me, they both felt the same to me. <laughs> and since I don't use it that often, I, I don't really care. Um, you can also tap on these lines down here and you can toggle off a few other options. Like I just like to leave this auto shape on because then when I draw a square or a circle, if I hold down, it's going to snap to that shape. And I like to have scribble to erase on. Um, and that is just if I'm using my text tool and I'm writing, I don't know, like happy birthday. All right, and then I decide, oh, I don't like how that looks. I can scribble on it and it, it'll delete that word. Um, scribble is a little temperamental. Sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. So <laughs> have fun playing with it. All right, so, oh, and you can see that when I have my pen selected, these colors change. So these are all the colors that I use, that I have set up for my pen. And if I tap on my highlighter, you can see all the colors that I have for my highlighter. The highlighter is pretty similar, so if I double tap on the highlighter, I can um, pick the size I want, and I can um, decide if I want it to draw straight lines or not. Also, you have the option to use tape here. I haven't really used tape a lot, so um, I, don't, I don't know how well it works, but you do have that option here. All right, so now let's talk about your colors. So you can see that your colors, all of your set colors just kind of run along the side here. Um, if I want to add a new color, I can just tap on any color dot and I'll tap on it twice, once to select it and then once to bring up this, um, this pop-up box. And then if I want to add a new color, I'm just going to go to grid and then I'm going to tap this plus button. And then I can pick a color here, I can use the color wheel or I can use the eyedropper tool if I'm trying to match a sticker that I have. All right, so pretty easy. You can see now that it added that color to the bottom here. If I wanted to rearrange that, I could just hold on it and I can just drag it wherever I want. So it's really easy to rearrange your colors. Um, if I decide that I don't want that color anymore, I can just tap on it and then just hold down and I can delete that color. So the colors are really easy and I haven't hit a limit. I've had quite a few colors here <laughs> before. I went through and kind of deleted a few of them, but you can have a lot of colors here and it's so easy to organize them. You can also, let me see, oh, hit on these lines right here and then it opens this other um, pop-up box where you can see all of your hex codes. Um, you can also tap on these three dots and kind of delete colors or duplicate them. And you can also rearrange your colors here if you want to, if it's easier for you. Another option you have is you see this little eye tool, I can hide colors. So say I'm trying to clean up my toolbar and right now I just want the colors that I'm going to use for my January spread visible. I can just go through and hide all the colors I don't want to use. So it just kind of cleans up your toolbar a little bit. Right now, I know a lot of people have talked about having, um, like being able to have sections, like if I wanted to put my all my January stickers in a section and my fall stickers in a section, um, you can't do that right now. But at least you have this option to kind of hide some of the colors you're not using. So I like it. Um, let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, um, so if there is a color that you use, so say that I use this black color a lot when I'm writing and I want to set up a custom style for it, you can hit style right here and you can make a custom style. So if there's a size of pen that I always use, say I like to use this pen for writing and I always right in the one millimeter. That's my favorite one. I can also um, pick a style down here too, but we'll talk about that more a little bit in a second. So now you can see that since this color, I set up a custom style on it. Oops, I hope you can see it. It's kind of at the bottom. Let me drag it up a little bit. So now that I set a custom style for this color, you can see a number in it. So you know that that one has a custom style. 
I use that a lot more with my highlighter because sometimes if there's textbooks that I'm reading and I want to highlight some notes or for my scripture study, I like to have the highlighter. I like to make a custom style for it. Um, so I know that I always use this maybe in my scripture study. This size works for me. So now you can see that even if I change the size here um, in the highlighter tool, I'm just going to make it this the biggest size I can. So all of these colors will now be in that bigger size except this one that I set a custom size for. It will stay, oh, well it is bigger. Maybe I set these smaller. Anyway, but it will stay that size that you set it for no matter, um, despite what you change this to. Hope that makes sense. And then if you want to take that custom style off, it's really easy. You just tap on it and then just turn the custom style off. So I know a lot of us like to use the dashed and dotted lines in our planners. So there are two ways you can do that in Noteful. So I'm just going to grab my pen tool, but it works with your highlight tool also. So I am just going to draw a line. All right, so now I have this line, but I want to make it dotted. So I'm going to take my lasso tool and select it, and then I'm just going to tap on style right here. So now I have some stroke style options. I can change the color here if I decide I don't like the color, but I can also tap on this, and now you see it changed it to a dashed line, or I can tap on this and it changes it to a dotted line. And then from here, I can also change the size if I want to. So I can pick a size that's already here, or if I tap on that, I can use the slider to pick a size. So that's one way you can do it. Another way is, it's that same way that you set up that custom style. So I'm just gonna say I want to draw my dotted line in this color. I'm just gonna um, select a custom style. I'm gonna pick a size that I want. And then down here, I'm just gonna choose that dotted um, stroke style. So now you can see when I go to draw my line, it's a dotted line. So that's really fun to play around with. I really love using those in my planner. All right, I think that is everything I wanted to talk about with pens and highlighters. Okay, so now let's dive into the fonts tool. This one is pretty straightforward, so I don't think there's a ton to cover. I'm just gonna go over to a blank page. So if I tap on the text tool here, you can see that if I tap with my finger, it's gonna open up my, key my keyboard so I can type. Um, if I tap on it with my pen, it's gonna assume I want to use the scribble feature. So I'm just gonna write, hello. And now that we have some text, I'm gonna tap out of it. <clears throat> but if I tap back into it, I can change the font. I can change the size here. I can change, I can do bold, italic, underline, or strike through. But honestly, it kind of depends on the font you're using. The bold and italics <clears throat> usually don't work with me, depending, for me, depending on the font I'm using. I'm going to skip this for right now, but right here I can tap on it and I can change my font color. I can go into this and I can choose to put a background on that font or I can put a border around it. And then here I can also kind of mess with the opacity of that font. All right, I can change the justification here, make it centered left or right. Um, this is your line height spacing. So usually I have it on auto, but <clears throat> this comes in really handy if you're trying to um, align your font with something or if you're trying to get it to fit in a smaller paragraph or a smaller area but I use it the most when I'm trying to align my font with like my little check dots here that I have <clears throat> I hope that makes sense so if I tap on that you can see that I can make the spacing really wide or really narrow but this comes in handy when you're trying to line it up with some things all right and then I think that was all down here <clears throat> oh, and I can also go into style here <clears throat> and I can change the color here, set a background here, do the same things. Um, and I can also mess with the opacity here too. It's kind of fun changing the opacity on fonts. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this for an example. This isn't really a font. This is a sticker, but it would work the same way if it was a font. So I'm going to just tap. Oops, let me go back into my lasso tool. I'm going to tap on this eight. And then I'm going to hit style and I'm going to change the opacity a little bit. I hope you can see this. So I'm just going to make it a little more see-through. But you can see how that just changes the color. <clears throat> Sorry, it's so dry here. But you can see how that just changes the color a little bit. It kind of makes the, the whatever I have for the background show up a little bit more. And that's how I make my little dots here. They're just white circles that I just change the opacity on. So that can be a lot of fun to play with. 
um, and let's see. Oh, and I can tap on it and I can resize it here. Um, let's see what else can I do. I can make a link and I have a whole video about links if you want to watch that. I think that's about all. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about today is this button down here. This lets you set your font up as a default size. So I know a lot of people have mentioned wanting to be able to save multiple font styles. And while that's not an option yet, I'm just going to show you how I kind of my workaround for that. So to do that, let me go back to my monthly really quick. All right, so when I'm filling out my monthly, I kind of use the same fonts a lot. Like this one, I use all the time. So I already have this font set up. I have the size set up that I like, and I have it on center spacing. So I'm just going to tap on this and make it my default size. So then when I switch over to January or February, I can just tap on my text tool. Maybe I'll write because Scribble hasn't been working, and I can write... Jen's birthday. All right, and you can see, oops, birthday, there we go. And you can see that it is that exact same font that I used on my planner here. So I can keep going. I can fill out my whole planner. And let's just say work meeting. All right, and I can just do it that way. And then when I'm finished using this font, and now I want to go to my weekly and fill that out. Um, in my weekly, oops, I was in the wrong month. It probably helps if I go to the right month. All right. So in my weekly, I use this font a lot, and I have this. I have it perfectly spaced to fit with my dots. So I'm just going to tap on it, and I'm going to set it as my default font. And so now I can go into my font, my um, text tool, and I can just write, I don't know, let's say walk dog. Okay, and then let's take out garbage. All right, and I don't know, set appointment. All right, but you can see that it is spaced perfectly to fit with my dots here, so I don't have to reset that up. Um, and let's see how it's, oh, and then if I go into my journal, all right. So this is a font that I always use when I write in my journal. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna tap on it. I'm going to set it as my default and then when I go to my next page to start writing my journal, I am good to go. I can just start writing and all of that, um, this how I have this font set up will, will kind of transfer over as long as I just keep setting these as my default. Oh my gosh, that is a terrible way to explain it. I'm sorry, I'm so bad at explaining things. I hope you... Yeah, like I hope you get the point though. Like I hope you it's clear enough that you understand how to use it. So even though you can't set up a lot of different um, font styles right now, you can just reuse the ones that you already have set up in your planner. So I hope that makes sense. <laughs> oh, one thing that is kind of important to know, if you're planning on using a font as your default style, so if I was planning on using this one, but I wanted to resize it, so I lasso it and I hit resize, and then I stretch it out and just make it really big, and that's the size I want it. And then I go and tap on it, and I say save as default. When I go to use that again, all right, you can see that it is not the same size. So if you're planning on using this as a default style, make sure that you size it here. So let me show you, I'm just gonna make it 96. Oops, try that again. All right, I'll just make it really big, 96. Okay, so now, ooh, that is really big. Let's change this to automatic. Okay, so now if I tap on it and I make it my default style, when I go to use it again, you can see that it keeps that size. So you can't um, lasso it and drag it to a size, you have to resize it here. So I hope that makes sense. I really do think that is everything I wanted to cover. This video is probably already long and confusing enough. Um, but I hope you got some useful information out of this video. Um, I might, if I think of a few other things, maybe I'll make another video with some more basic, noteful um, things in it. <laughs> I don't know. But thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.